There's a couple seats up here. John Burkett. Uh, glad to see everyone here today. I'm from Blair County. Um, in order to keep everyone awake and uh, not snoring or something, I have a little incentive I want to offer. I want to, when I'm finished today, I want to you to be able to name three take-home points that I make, and I'm going to offer ten dollars. For three of them, I'm going to give Jared my my money. He's an honest guy. I'm the bank. He's the banker. <laughs> so it's not counterfeit either. Uh, well. <laughs> stay awake. You have the opportunity to uh, to have ten dollars more than you came with when the day's over. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of about our farm, the history of our farm, uh, some of the things that work for us, some of the things that hasn't worked for us. I'm a third generation uh, dairyman. My son's the fourth. <coughs> and uh, this is our farm in Blair County. How many of you have ever been to Burkett Falls Farm? Okay. Well, the waterfalls that the name that the farm is named after is right there. And I tell people that 30 years ago, if we started bottling water instead of milking cows. We'd be in Florida today with a nice uh, home on the beach and uh, enjoying life. But uh, that's all mountain spring water. It's extremely soft. It comes right off the mountain from behind the farm. It's got native brook trout in there. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great asset that we have that sometimes we often forget about. But had we got into the water business and made a lot of money, we wouldn't have had near as much fun nor as many, nor as many uh, great people. Uh, as we have in the dairy business. We actually have uh, pictures of the uh, trout. There's native brook trout that spawn there every year and they, uh, they jump that falls and uh, swim onto the mountain. When I ask if you've ever been to our farm, a lot of we live three miles off of Route 220, and a lot of people, when they leave Route 220 and drive up Polecat Hollow Road, they get about halfway up there and they say, hey, <clears throat> there's no way there's a farm up there. Uh, can't be. But that's where our farm is. It's nestled at the foot of Blue Knob Mountain. Blue Knob Mountain is one of the, the better ski resorts in the east. In fact, it's the second highest elevation uh, in the state, <coughs> Blue Knob Mountain. But my father, at age 14, uh, his, his, his dad was hurt in a farm accident. And he was 14, and he wanted to milk cows. He wanted to be in the dairy business. But he knew if he was going to farm, he had to make his money from something other than the crops and the fields because it's just a third-class farm. And he tells people it was suited for goats and sheep, not dairy cows. And... Our philosophy has always been a little bit like this. Uh, we never hesitated about taking the less traveled path. This is part of the farm, uh, lay of the land. If we have three acres that's level, we put something on it, corn, beans, or something. <laughs> My dad, uh, myself, and my oldest brother. We get, we've been in the pole business for 50 plus years, and we've been asked many, many times, well, where did the pole come from? Where did the red come from? 
This isn't the source. <laughs> As many people contend. I do think Dick Mellinger has him in his time. <laughs> this is the source. This picture was taken in the uh, late 1960s. My father, his father, had a herd of crossbreds, mostly Guernseys, and he, wanted, he had one purebred cow at the time. So he went to Wisconsin and bought a trailer load of registered Holsteins. And that was 1960. He brought them home, and this cow was in calf. I mean, she was, she was in dam. She, uh, they brought the cows home. This calf was born. She was their princess cow, and she was pulled. Now, we didn't, my father didn't realize that she was pulled until she was older in life. The thing that made this cow attractive to us is she was the best cow that my father had. Best milk cow, best producing cow, best butterfat cow. This cow in the late 60s and 70s had seven consecutive records over 1,100 pounds of fat. The fact that she was pulled was secondary to the fact that she uh, had the production. My father, he's a thinker uh, and an artist kind of a jack-of-all-trades, so he made these uh, cartoons trying to depict the process of uh, dehorning over the years. He said he's participated in all of them. Don't care to do any of them. <laughs> this bull, uh, Burkett Falls ABC, was a son of the old cow that I just showed you. The first bull, pulled bull to ever go into AI, he went into, uh, went to ABS in the mid 70s. Uh, his name was Burkett Falls ABC. Two thirds of the pulled Holsteins today in the world trace back to, to this bull. So there are pulled cattle show up, I mean, across the country and around the world. Uh, Dr. Uh, Van Raden from USDA has a keen interest in polled, and he actually did some research, <coughs> traced the poll back uh, as best he could, but there's a Celtic gene, in, a, when you're talking about polled, there's two different types of genes. There's a Celtic gene that's related to the beef breeds. There's a Frisian gene that's related to the Holstein. Our particular uh, line is the Frisian gene, they traced it back 21 generations uh, to Holland. Holstein International did a, a polled gallery back a few years ago, and uh, my old 4-H cow, whoops, the old elevation uh, was named, there it is, uh, the most impactful of all the polled genetics that's uh, out there today. She, the, the, the Elevation Sophie Cow, was a, a granddaughter of Burkett Falls ABC. This was a group of ABC daughters that was at our place. We just took a, lined them up in the barn one day and, and uh, took a picture. The next to the last cow on that photograph was the dam of Elevation Sophia. This is just a listing of more, of more, more of the, the whole genetics around the world and their relationship to the, to the ABC bull. Uh, uh, trying to think uh, the popular pole bull. Lawn boy. He has two crosses. <coughs> well, one cross to ABC and another to another bull. I'll show you here. Grandy. This is Burger Falls <coughs> Grandy. He's a son of the ABC bull. Now, Part of the success that we've had over the years, if you ask my dad, who's 86 years old, and actually uh, he's down with the flu today, he's very seldom sick, but he, uh, he finally left me, uh, make him a doctor's appointment yesterday, and uh, he's got a sinus infection and he's pretty much under the weather, but he keeps telling me he wants to come along to a meeting one of these days, and he was planning on coming today, but uh, he couldn't make it. But anyway, if you ask him, uh, to name the reasons of our success with breeding cows or breeding polled over the years, uh, one of the first things out of his mouth would be this gentleman right here, Bill Weeks. And uh, 
and triple A. When my father first uh, met Bill Weeks was back in the early 70s. This bull was on the farm. He was eight months old. My, my dad, he was polled. And we didn't know he was a red carrier, but he was a red carrier at the time. So my dad was anxious to use him. He had this cow he wanted to breed this bull to. So he backed the cow into the gutter. The bull mounted her when he was eight months old, fell off the cow and broke his tail head. And uh, the cow got pregnant, but it really made the bull look rough. And he was running around just a, just a bull with a busted up tail head. And one day, Bill Weeks was there. And I was, at the time, probably 10 years old. And we were done looking at cows, done analyzing cows. And, and Dad said to Bill, he said, Bill, he said, I'd like you to look at this bull. He said, I'm kind of ashamed of him the way he looks, but he said, I want your opinion of him. And I can remember the bulls in a box stall, and, and Bill, no one in this crowd knew Bill Weeks. I, I'm, I'm, you're all too young. <laughs> Maybe Nelson, okay. <laughs> Bill was a man of very few words. And I can remember Bill walking over to the pen that the, the Grandy Bull was in, and, and he just he looked in at him and probably only observed him for, I wasn't a minute, and he turned around and he said to my dad, he said, Dave, he said, use that bull. He said, use him a lot. He said, you'll never, you'll never regret using him. You'll never be ashamed of him. And the shame was the word he used because that was what dad said to Bill. He said, I'm ashamed to show you this bull. And as a result, <laughs> that, that next slide I try to not have it up there too <laughs> this, is a, this is a better one but as a result the Grandy Bull was probably the most not probably was the most impactful bull that we had ever used on the farm and in a large part because of this guy and if Bill Bill never put numbers on him that day he just looked at him and made that comment had we not used that bull uh Lawn boy would have never happened. We started analyzing in the 1970s. We've worked with three analyzers. Look quick, because I'm going to keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. We worked with three analyzers over 50 years. We worked with Bill, and we were...